right, welcome back everyone to the Madness and Grace podcast. How's it going, Matt? Going well. How are you today, Emily? Good. It's a little funny because we just recorded another episode and I'm asking you how we're doing, but sometimes that's just what you got to do. <laughs> well, now it's just back to you and me, just talking yeah. about mental health and stuff. Totally. Um, but today I just wanted to talk about something that I've just been seeing so much about in the news, on social media, which is kind of a reoccurring theme um, when I'm picking topics. It's just kind of, you know, what is everyone talking about right now? And I feel like things can get really confusing and people can use sort of buzzwords. We were talking a minute ago, you know, gaslight, narcissist, you know, what do these things really mean? And the one that really stuck out to me recently is boundaries. And a lot of people have different definitions of the word. What have you heard about it? No, I think you're right. I and mean, well, you, yeah. you hear that a lot with anybody that, um, you know, when they upset you or they said something that you don't agree with, so they, they'll throw out the, what well, you've, you know, that's a boundary that I hold up or, or right. you're crossing my boundary. Sometimes people refer to it as triggering them right uh you know those types of things and you know part of the problem with that is that it's impossible to adhere to a boundary if you don't know it exists and so uh so then boundaries become kind of moving targets you know Mm -hmm. one time you're okay with something and another time you're not and that's not that's not really a boundary that's just a kind of a personal feeling or preference for the moment Mm -hmm. uh and you know boundaries are boundaries are important in relationships we had one of our Previous guest, John Townsend, he wrote a very famous book called Boundaries uh, yeah. with Henry Cloud. And in fact, frankly, I think one of the reasons you hear about bound, you know, bound, that term thrown out so much now is because of that book. Yeah. Uh, but if you read the book, you will find out what real boundaries are. Right. Not the, not the buzzword boundaries. Are. Not the buzzword, right. Matt, can you explain why setting boundaries with family and friends is crucial for maintaining your own mental health? Yeah, absolutely. Well, number one, I think we all have to understand we have boundaries, whether we recognize them or not. We all have we all have set boundaries, at least in our heads, for how we expect other people to uh, respond towards us, to treat us, to speak to us, things like that. And so, uh, you know, we, we tend to not be happy or we get upset when someone crosses that boundary. The the reality is that when in a in a closer, I'm not talking about an acquaintance relationship where you barely know the person. Uh, I'm talking about in a more you know, intimate or, or you know, like you said, family friends type of thing. Uh, right. Your family's typically uh, it's pretty obvious how um, people want to be treated. They tend to treat you. I mean, it's you know obviously right from the Bible. You know, treat uh, you know treat others the way you want them to treat you, right? And so you know you know how to treat your family and your friends, because that's how you want to be treated. So, so you tend to have the same boundaries for them that you would want them to have for you. Uh, Now, the problem comes in when you have a person who violates boundaries, you know, just willy nilly, they just do whatever they want to do. uh, And then we don't set those boundaries uh, kind of up for them to say, I don't, you know, I don't appreciate when this occurs. And, you know, and I'm asking you not to uh, to do that. Now, the other thing about a boundary is, you know, let's just, you know, we typically, we're talking about boundaries, we're talking about countries, okay, countries yeah. have a have a boundary, right? So mm-hmm. there's a, a consequence a when you cross over the border, okay? Mm-hmm. I mean, we've been talking about that in the news a lot, okay? And so if you cross over the border into some countries, and they're not supposed to be there, you'll get killed. Okay. And so, so the thing is, is it's the same thing when we set up boundaries in our relationship, there needs to be a consequence Mm -hmm. uh, for crossing a boundary. So if you, if I tell you, I don't ever want you to call me Matt again. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, You know, that, you know, you're supposed to call me Dr. Stanford or whatever, I mean, whatever it may be. Uh, If you just keep calling me Matt and there is no consequence, uh, well, why, why would you ever change? I mean, I'm, right. I'm rewarding your behavior in some sense. The other thing is, I also probably need to explain to you why it's important to me that you not call me that. What What is it that that does to me? Maybe, maybe I, I don't know, I'm just making this up. You know, maybe it is that I like you to call me Dr. Stanford when we're in meetings with people from outside the organization uh, because I want them to understand what our relationship or whatever, you know what I'm saying? Sure, I mean, yeah. But if, if a person doesn't understand why a boundary exists, it doesn't mean that they have to agree with why it exists. They have to just understand why you want it to exist because it's your boundary. Okay. Right. Uh, and then they also have to know what the consequence is 
for crossing the boundary. You know, and, and in a relationship, that consequence may be that you're going to and ultimately damage our relationship. Like we're not going to be able to be in a relationship, but a, a relationship with zero boundaries is destined to, to just hurt two people. I mean, there's right. just no doubt about that. And ultimately could cause significant damage in those individuals, depending on what we're talking about in the context of boundaries. Everyone has boundaries. It's just about communicating them. So absolutely, there is absolutely. no relationship with no boundaries, but there is a relationship where you have them and you just don't say what they are and you're hurt. Right. So. And if you, you know, if your boundary is, you know, don't ever stand closer than, I'm mean, again, just making this up, yeah, closer yeah. than three feet to me. But every time you're talking to somebody, you stand two inches away from them. Right. They're not going to understand why you want that to be your boundary because right. that's not it. So typically when you set a boundary, you also follow a boundary. Like if, yeah. <laughs> if that's, if my boundary is, I don't want to hear you use a curse word. Mm -hmm. it's, this is a very common one that we uh, families set up with people that have serious mental illness, because a lot of times they will use foul language when they're not thinking correctly and things like that. And, and the, you know, the boundary is in the in the home, in, in our interactions with one another, you will not use foul language. Well, mm -hmm. if, you know, if I say that's the boundary, but then I'm cursing at you every time I talk to you. How yeah. could I ever expect you to, in essence, what I'm saying is the boundary I just set up is meaningless. And so, so again, it goes both ways. And I think a lot of times when we think about boundaries, we think about boundaries are things you set up for other people, uh, but they're not things that you necessarily have to be interested in. Well, how can one overcome feelings of guilt or fear when it comes to setting boundaries? Um, personally, I think I have dealt with this with friends and you just feel bad for saying, you know, I can't, you know, I can't be there for you emotionally right now. And you just feel guilty for right. conveying that. So how can someone overcome that? Well, I think one of the things you have to understand is that you don't set up boundaries to punish people. You set mm -hmm. up boundaries to try to make a relationship more healthy. They're always mm -hmm. set up that, for that reason. If mm -hmm. you're setting up a boundary to punish someone, then you should just end the relationship. That, that's right. not what they're for. Boundaries are set up so that people can become successful mm -hmm. and a relationship can become more healthy. So, so you have to let the guilt go right away because the only reason you're willing to even set up a boundary is because you want to maintain the relationship and you want it to become more healthy. That's a positive thing. You don't set up a boundary because you don't want to have the relationship anymore. If that's why you're setting up the boundary, if you say, I don't want to interact with you anymore, Matt, because you're toxic to me. Well, that's not a boundary. What yeah. you're telling me is, or I should say, you say, don't call me anymore because you're toxic. Yeah. Okay. That's not a boundary. That's mm -hmm. ending a relationship. You need, right. and you need to recognize it as that. But yeah. if you say, okay, you know, let's say that I'm your crazy uncle that calls you all the time and 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 I just you know I dump everything on you and you just can't take anymore and you say look I you know I I can't I just don't have I'm not at a place in my life right now where I can really uh help you walk through that I want to maintain a relationship I care for you um mm -hmm. and I'm happy to 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 do that so but I you know you text me every day and you ask me all these questions so I'm only going to respond to you in the evening or right. I'm only going to like, I remember I had a, I had a client uh, that at the time she had my, she was going through a crisis situation. So she had my cell phone and every morning at seven 30, she would start texting me. And yeah. I mean, she would text me constantly throughout the day yeah. and the boundary I set up. And, and I mean, I'd given her the number. So, I mean, right. I, I knew she would contact but the boundary I gave her was I will respond to you at four o'clock every day. Mm -hmm. And and that's and that's it. I'm gonna respond to you, and then I'm not gonna respond to you again until. The, so what that did over time was that she knew that I would respond yeah. because our relationship would would continue. But she also began to not start peppering me literally every five minutes with a text throughout the day. She knew to wait. Uh, yeah. And so again, you're trying to make the relationship work. So you have to let the guilt go. Yeah. Uh, you know, the other thing is is you have to understand that if a person violates a boundary, there's a consequence and you only do them a disservice by not having them feel the, you know, the pain of the consequence. Uh, a boundary is meaningless if there's no consequence. There is no boundary right. if there's, there's an empty threat in a sense. 
There's yeah. no boundary if there's no consequence. There has to be a consequence. And the consequence needs to be reasonable. Right. It needs to be a reasonable consequence. Could you give maybe some examples of situations where boundaries need to be set and how they can be handled? I'm sure there is an endless amount of situations yeah. where boundaries need to be set, but maybe just some general examples. Yeah, and I think, you know, most people, when they're asking you about boundaries, just like this conversation we're having right now, they're not really interested in boundaries and normal, healthy relationships. You mm-hmm. know, I mean, people that people that are able to regulate their emotions, that have normal cognitive processing, that, uh, you know, that have a, appropriate kind of relation, you know, kind of care for one another, don't come to you, you know, as a psychologist and go, can you tell me how to set up boundaries? They only come to you and ask you that when they have, there's a problem relationship. So I'll give some examples around that. So one of the Mm -hmm. things that we deal with a lot here at the Hope and Healing Center in our clinic, particularly uh, parents of adult children uh, with a mental illness, the the adult children have a mental illness uh, or an addiction, which we we actually talked about in in an earlier episode. And so, uh, and and usually what it is, is that individual is acting out in some way that is uh, either they're involved in criminal criminality, they're involved in aggressive or threatening behavior. I mentioned earlier again, the use of, of foul language. I mean, they're they're doing something that's making uh, these into these parents that are probably caring for them because of the the hard times that they're in, uh, mm-hmm. making it them feel like they can't have that individual in their home anymore. Uh, and so, like a real classic one is you have a, an adult child with mental illness, and you know that they're using drugs. You know they're using drugs, uh, and you're like, "Well, I don't want them to use drugs." Well, I don't want them to use drugs either. But you don't have control over what an adult does, right? Uh, but you do have control over what goes on in your home. And mm-hmm. so, so if that individual lives with you, the one of the boundaries that we often will start out with is you you need to tell that individual you are not to use or to have illegal substances in this home, mm-hmm. period. So there's a, that's a, and, and, you know, hear what I'm saying. I'm not saying you will not use them. I'm saying right. you will not use them in my home mm-hmm. and you will not have them in my home. And then the, usually the consequence there is if you are using them in my home or I find them in my home, I will call the authorities. Yeah. So that, that, and that's the consequence. And you must do that if that happens. So if you go into their room and there's a bag of cocaine laying on the dresser, you call the police and you say, I found a bag of cocaine in my house. Yeah. And so, so there's a consequence for that. Now, the thing is, is that if they use cocaine down the street, Mm -hmm. that's their choice. I know that you don't want that, but you have no control over that at that point. Mm -hmm. Uh, Another thing would be, like I said, the use of foul language, any type of threatening behavior, uh, bringing certain peers around that are, are negative influences. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I can't keep an adult from hanging out with certain people, but I certainly can keep an adult from hanging out with those individuals in my home. Yeah. I certainly can keep an adult from using my car for certain things. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, if, if I say you are not to take my car uh, to that person's home mm-hmm. and the only way I'm going to allow you to borrow my car. Yeah, and so that's the boundary. And then the only way I'm going to allow you to borrow my car is if you allow me to uh, use GPS to track your phone. So I know where you are. Uh, And if I, and when I see that car, if I see that car at that person's house, well, then you're never in my car again. So, so again, the, but what you're doing is you're, you're giving the person an opportunity to be successful. And and I think that's the thing people forget about. If Mm -hmm. you set up some boundaries for someone and they're successful over a a period of time, you need to reward them. You don't just go, oh, well, great. You know, I I only do something when they mess up. You only punish them. And a consequence isn't a punishment. It's a consequence. And so, uh, you know, you reward them. Hey, you know what? You've been doing a great job with the car. I'll let you borrow it another night a week now or whatever, you know, so. So, you know, behavior that's rewarded is more likely to be repeated. Mm-hmm. That, and so uh, if you set up a boundary and you allow that person to, to violate that boundary over and over and over and you do nothing, there is no consequence, you're rewarding a negative behavior. But you yeah. have to reward the positive behaviors and you have to enact the consequences for the other. And it can be something simple. It can literally be a simple, a boundary might be, you know, you have to uh, put your dishes away uh, after dinner. And I know sometimes with people with mental health problems, it can become as simple as that. But if you don't do that, well, then I'm not going to prepare 
a meal for you. You'll have to prepare your own meal. It, it's just simple. It can be simple things. It can be very complex things. It just depends. I appreciate how you're saying, you know, it can help the other individual. I feel like boundaries tend to be a kind of like self-preservation type of thing, but it's not only helping you, it's helping the person. It's a, it's a two-way street. I mean, you're trying, you're trying to help the other person learn mm-hmm. how to engage in an appropriate way, because for some reason, whatever that may be, and obviously if it's mental health problem or addiction or something like that, then we have I guess in, in some sense, we have a little more compassion for that person. You may right. be at your wits end, in, mm-hmm. but like, I, you know, I'm only setting this up so that I don't, you know, strangle them kind of a thing. But the reality is you're, you're only setting it up because you want to make the relationship more healthy. And I think that's where you have to start when you're setting up the boundary, as opposed to I'm going to set this up and this is their last chance kind of thing. Uh, you know, if, if you're ready to end the relationship, if you're setting up a boundary and you said, this is their last chance, just end the relationship. Yeah. Because yeah. you've already decided, basically all you're doing is waiting to, for them to violate a boundary. So just yeah. now's the time to end a relationship. And some, in some sense, ending a relationship is a boundary. Yeah, that's good advice. You know, we're all different. Um, and I think cultural and societal factors play into a lot of things, not just boundaries, but all sorts of things that have to do with mental illness. But do you think that cultural and societal factors make it harder to set boundaries with family and friends? Maybe your family is extremely traditional in some ways, or they think that you're kind of, you're going against them is kind of the theme that I've seen around boundaries. Yeah. Yeah. I see. I mean, there certainly are cultural differences. There's no doubt about that. I mean, some, some families, uh, you know, they're much, some cultures, the uh, extended family is much more, it's much closer. They may even live together uh, closer. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, there may be, you know, kind of cultural taboos on, you know, setting up boundaries where a person isn't able to engage or be in the home or stuff like that. Um, again, I think you have to, I think you have to step back and you have to say, you know, a lot of times those cultural norms were set up in the context of normal, healthy relationships. Yeah. And so if you're, if you're actively setting up a boundary, you don't have a normal, healthy relationship. There's a reason that you're doing that. If you had a normal, healthy relationship, the boundaries, they, they take care of themselves mm-hmm. because you're able to engage that person and they're able to pick up on your boundaries and you're able to pick up on theirs. So, so I think, you know, you have to kind of, in some sense, you have to kind of move culture, cultural norms to the side and say, hey, I understand what our culture says. But this is not a normal, healthy relationship because of X, because of bipolar disorder, because of substance use or whatever. So I think that's one thing. I think another thing is that, you know, there are there are societal things uh, there uh, that occur in in the sense of, you know, our society now tends to not want a lot of boundaries, not a lot of rules, you know, Mm -hmm. things like that. We do a lot of interaction through uh, social media and and kind of. kind of information technology kind of stuff you don't set up boundaries on a text yeah okay i mean you don't you don't text somebody and say this is what you have to do from now on you have that that has to be in in person so that you can have that kind of face-to-face emotional interaction so they can pick up on what's going on Uh, i also think that again you have to say hey i know how i may have lived my life maybe i'm really a free spirit and i don't like a lot of rules but you know, that's in a normal, healthy situation. This is not one. So we're trying to set up. And I also think when you set boundaries up and you're having a conversation with the person, you explain to them the boundaries are being set up so that you can mend the relationship. So it can be a healthy relationship. So we can maintain a relationship, you know, so that you can be more successful in whatever it is that you're not being successful in right now. Uh, And the day will come, hopefully, that these boundaries don't have to be so rigid and in place. And so, I mean, I think if you start from that place, it's a, it's a little bit easier, but you undoubtedly are going to get pushback. And and I'll tell you a a good example, a good modern example. And that is a family where the mother and the father aren't married, Mm -hmm. uh, but they have a child or even an adult child that they have to deal with. uh, And one sets up a boundary and the other one just doesn't, recognize it so yeah. so I mean they set it up for the child right and so you know the mother says you can't do this or this is going to happen and as soon as they go to the father's house or talk to the father they can do whatever they want and there's no consequence and then that causes more conflict 
I mean, again, that's a, you know, we have to be better than that. And, yeah. and we have to, you know, if we're setting up a boundary, we're, we're saying, I want this person to do better so they can be better. Um, you know, we have to look beyond our own kind of personal problems that we have with one another. But that I see that all the time with uh, yeah. uh, with families that have, you know, kind of broken families, uh, you know, because particularly if you're the custodial parent, you know, they're with you more often, you're more likely to have to set up the boundary and they yeah. go over to, you know, Disneyland dad. Mm -hmm. And then there are no, there are no rules or no boundaries. And, and that ultimately is just going to be lead to the detriment of the child. What advice or tips do you have for someone who is hesitant or unsure about setting boundaries with their family or their friends? Well, I think you have to ask yourself to begin with, why are you, you know, why are you even looking to set a boundary? Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, have you, you know, what is it, what is it on your, from you personally that are making you, you know, are you, are you frightened? Is what's yeah. happening damaging to you? Uh, is it is it that the situation is damaging for the other person, and that's why you're trying? To, why is it that you're doing this? What is the the core reason? Uh, and then I think you have to ask yourself the second question, which we we're just talking about, and that is, you know, am I doing this to punish the person, or am I doing this because I want to try to make the relationship more healthy over time and give the person an opportunity to to change their behavior in a more positive. And if, you know, if the answer is I want to punish them, then you need to end the relationship. I mean, yeah. cause that's not that, I mean, that's a doomed strategy right there. Right. Uh, and then I think you sit down with the person after you've kind of thought it through it. So that's a good idea to write it out. So that's a good idea to talk it through with somebody. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, you know, then sit down with that individual and you explain to them and make sure they understand. Uh, and it has to be very, specific and that is the boundary is x and if the boundary is violated then y occurs right uh and you know and i don't like i don't like boundaries that are set up of like if you do x i'm throwing you out yeah i mean that i i just i don't find that to be particularly helpful mm -hmm. uh what i would say let, let's say something was at that serious of a of a level i, I don't know what it is but whatever it is so it, it, it so if what I would say is if you do X, you're no longer going to be able to live here with me. Mm -hmm. And these are the these are the three options of where I will help you go to. So, you know, yeah. maybe that's a shelter. Maybe that's a group home. Maybe that's another relative that's agreed to take the person in. But but you've already thought that through. You know, mm -hmm. I, I, I never think it's helpful to just put somebody out on the street kind of yeah. thing. Uh, I also find that families are really hesitant to even use that as a consequence, you know, where they just put somebody on the street. So I, I just don't think it's a good idea. But mm -hmm. to say you can't live here anymore and I'm going to help you find an alternative place to live uh, when you are, you know, if you just say it that way, well, then the bound, the consequence is meaningless because when the yeah. day comes and they violate, then what are you going to take six months to find a place to live? You have to have done it ahead of time where you know what's going to happen. Yeah. And it may be, it may be going to a shelter or whatever that may be. Um, and so, uh, you know, another consequence that I've seen is uh, when you have someone who maybe has uh, some delusional thinking or something like that at times and, and when they don't take their medication and stuff and, and they become very aggressive uh, and they're just, it's explained to them that if you don't take your medication, you become physically aggressive in this home we will call the police. I mean, that, that, and you have to do that. I mean, that's a, sometimes that can be a life and death kind of situation. So, so you just have to make sure that the boundary is clear and the consequence is clear uh, and that you follow through with that. Uh, typically people don't put this kind of thought into this or they're not as specific in what I'm explaining. And that a lot of times is the problem. So it's yeah. like you kind of thought what you would like the boundary to kind of be and you, kind of almost told them but they should have picked up on it and then they violate it and you blow up and it doesn't help you know and so yeah. uh you just have to be very specific and the other thing is if somebody is not willing you know the next question people usually ask is well what if i sit down with them and i've got these three boundaries and they go well i'm not doing that mm -hmm. okay well wh what were the consequences of those boundaries that's what's going to be it was that they can't live there then they're not going to be able to live there Mm -hmm. If it was you and they are no longer going to have a relationship, well, then you're no longer going to have a relationship. 
-hmm. That's what they're what they're telling you. It's an interaction. It's a conversation. Yeah. What they're telling you is, I'm not going to follow your boundaries. So yeah. I dare you. I dare you. So you know, I, I and, and we just gotta you gotta not be guilty for that because you're protecting yourself. You're protecting them. You're giving them an opportunity for a healthy uh, interaction. Um, and depending on what the situation is, they may not be able to follow your boundaries. They may be at a, a mental state uh, where they're not even able to do it. They may need to live somewhere else for a while. Matt, thanks so much. I feel like this was a really insightful episode again, just because it's just one of those words that's thrown around and nobody really knows what it means until they kind of dive deeper into it. So yeah, I think that was great. Yeah. Well, thank you. I, think, I don't think it's a, it's a good question. I think we need to be as a society, we need to be a little less sensitive than we are about mm -hmm. everything. I mean, stuff happens. People yeah. say things you don't like. People say things you don't agree with. That's people not make mistakes. Yeah, right. I people like make mistakes. People yeah. don't have to be just like you for you to yeah. have an inter a relationship. And people don't have to be just like you to make a relationship healthy. I mean, so right. that's okay. You know, people are people are prickly. That's yeah. that's the nature of humanity. All right. Well, thank you, Matt. And thank you to everyone who's listening. As always, I'm going to leave all of our Hope and Healing Center and Institute information in our show notes. I can even link to our past episode that we did with Dr. Townsend, who wrote that book, Boundaries. I think that would yeah, be a great, great resource. So thanks so much, Matt. Right. Thank you.